get started on time. So thank you for joining us. And because this is, I think, Valentine's is on our mind and we've said nothing better than making your body your Valentine. And today we have with us Ryan Fernando, who is the founder of Qua Nutrition. He's a celebrity nutritionist. He is a nutritionist to Virat Kohli, to Amir Khan, the women's cricket team, and so, so many more people. For those of you who don't know me, I am Sukirti Gupta. I am the co-founder of Sipping Thoughts. Sipping Thoughts is a multi-platform media company that was set up by me and by Neeta Gurkutia. It was set up keeping in mind the tagline, real women, real thoughts. We wanted to create a no judgment platform and create a network of women for women and of course the men that have supported us. We reach to about 2.5 million women on a monthly basis. We're available on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, and please do check out our website. But today, what are we talking about? Your most important asset, which is taking care of the body, which should be every woman's first love and priority. You and your body will stay together from birth to death. The more you care for your body, the more your body will care for you. The body and our body is specifically our responsibility and no one else can take that responsibility for us. So today we have and we're very, very fortunate to have Ryan as he shares his tips for well-being that are especially for women. For those of you who don't know Ryan, he's a nutritionist, he's a counselor for over a thousand prominent individuals spanning the top CEOs of the country, Olympic, Commonwealth, Asiad and international sport events, medalists, participants, extreme human endurance athletes, celebrities, and top movie artists, visionary personalities, children with also complicated medical conditions. So he's literally seen the entire gamut and he coaches a lot of very different people from Virat Kohli to Yuvrat Singh to Amir Khan, the women's cricket team, Shwetam Rasheti, Saina Nerval, Anjum Mugdil, Sharmila Nicolette, and many, many more. So first of all, Ryan, welcome to Sipping Thoughts. We're very excited to have you here. Sukirti, thank you for having me. Uh, lovely introduction. I'm feeling almost embarrassed right now because there are questions coming in of people who actually come to me, you know, the 60-year-olds, the Aam Admi, like you and me. We talk about the celebrities because guess what? That's what makes us famous. But at the core essence, if you remove out the celebrity equation, everyone's unique. So I'm really happy to be here today. So first of all, Ryan, I know the COVID times have been very, very stressful for a lot of us. A lot of us have been stuck inside. Many of us don't have a lot of space. We're missing kind of our routine. We've had to adjust and kind of make do. And what other issues are you seeing that are cropping up because of COVID? And we're very lucky that hopefully we'll get back to normal. So, I, I mean, COVID started in March last year and um uh, you, you know, the, the celebrities that would meet, even my normal clients who have me, the, one of the first things that came forth was uh, a lot of people who are on Instagram, on Facebook and on Zoom, obviously you're of a certain um, income and therefore you have domestic help. So the biggest problem was the domestic help was cut out. So food prep that normally was alien to a lot of people uh, changed. So jaru pocha, bartan done khai. Uh, you know, uh, preparation of food, even purchase of food went haywire. So I think a lot of people took for granted, one, the preparation of food, two, the sourcing of ingredients for those foods. So this was one of the biggest issues I saw in the COVID period. So we came up with shopping list. We came up with the top foods for immunity, top foods for fat burning, uh, top foods for uh, five minute cooking. You know, so when, when clients come to us for bespoke nutrition planning, everyone thinks, oh, it's a diet plan. But a nutritionist can go beyond that. So one of the things was, can I help you in your meal planning and food planning at COVID time? The other thing was the putting the whole family together or people together. So from one end, you had people who are in family. So there was a lot of like, you're in my face, husband and wife, husband would travel for a good part of the month. So it was out of the wife's face. Now suddenly telling the wife how to run the kitchen, how to run the house. So we saw a lot of stress levels go up. And if those who were single, we saw the loneliness levels go up. So I, I, faced, I faced both of these with my clients and coaching them through that would, was, uh, was a little difficult because a lot of humans use food as solace. Uh, food is kind of the, the thing that I want to hug and I want to make love to. And, you know, food is my, my release. Food is my pleasure. Food is my go-to. Food is my comfort, my cuddle bug, teddy bear, that sort of thing. And as a result, what happens is that uh, you don't have a control. And we live, we literally live in the best time that man has ever lived. 
in terms of the availability and sourcing of food. COVID or no COVID, okay? Nobody starved. At least anyone on this Zoom meeting did not starve. Okay, we stocked up, we had our food. But I think the, the thing that came out from the availability on the best time of our life ever was that uh, as the restaurants began to open up, but you didn't go out to eat, the, the food delivery apps made the unhealthy food more available. So I, I, I'm depressed, I'm lonely, uh, I can't go to the gym, um, I, I'm working from home, so I don't need to dress up, I don't need to take care of myself, the beauty parlors are closed, so out went the window, at least even a little bit of a pressure that people had to look good. And so this was another thing that came to the light, which was people just let their bodies go during this period. So no exercise, eat crappy food, order from out. And we actually saw between what March to June, um, anywhere from a 5% to a 10% of your body weight increase in a lot of people. So this, these were some of the, these are some of the things that we faced because I had people calling me up saying help, but they didn't want to cook. They called up saying help. Uh, they didn't want to go and source the right ingredients. They would call up and say help, but they didn't want to cook and was sourcing the bad nutrition from out. So there was a lot of counseling. There was a lot of uh, goal setting uh, for every day in terms of little bit of work that needs to be done, cooking that need to be done. So I hope that period never comes back in our life again. And I'm looking forward to once everyone gets the vaccine, because I really want to see how many people have understood we hit rock bottom. And if you had two cars in the garage, you've gone, you've gone abroad for a vacation, uh, you know, you had, you had money in the bank, nothing mattered if you had diabetes, hypertension, uh, you know, um, gut issues, uh, obesity, uh, and anything in a medical issue because COVID put a target on your back. Uh, and today it's COVID. I, I do believe in the, in the distant future, it's going to be far more targets coming on people's back. So I do hope people have really learned their lessons saying that I need to be fitter. I got to spend my money on eating correctly. I got to spend my money on buying the right nutritious food and uh, basically put a, a, a zipper on your taste buds at the end of the day. Now I know, and this is a million dollar question. Everybody is dying to know you work with so many celebs. Now we see radical transformations, especially when they're getting ready for a movie or they're getting ready for an event. How long do they work? Because, you know, they make it look so easy. I'm, I'm behind the lines. It's not easy. I've been behind the lines with Amir, with Abhishek. Virat with me lost five kgs of body fat and gained three kgs of muscle during the COVID. How hard do they work? It's a profession, right? So those of you who are listening in, how hard did you work in COVID? Those of you in management positions, I know I actually worked more in COVID uh, because I ran my clinics harder. We had to shut down so many of them and we put in four, five hours extra every day. So if we did that in business, imagine the film stars doing that in their business, which is their body. So, you know, when people say that, you know, they came out better with six packs and, and much more fitter, uh, there was two hours of workout a day, every day, religiously. There was a huge focus on the eating. And, and I always tell people, think about it. You work out once a day, but you eat three or four times a day. So people eat whatever they want to do and let their bodies go. Uh, sorry, let their, they, they work out very, very hard, but they let their bodies go when it comes to eating. Like, no, 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 I worked out really hard. So, you know, I can, I can eat whatever I want. And, and I do believe women especially need to understand this. Form your lips straight to your hips. That's the number one mantra. So you need to really understand what you need to do. And, and the film stars, especially the females, uh, Anushka Sharma, I worked with Ramya down here in South India. These, these people, when, they are, uh, when their body's role is demanded, uh, they work out really hard and they really focus on their nutrition. Now, one more thing, because of COVID, a lot of us have been sitting and they say now sitting is the new smoking. And because of that, a lot of weight, especially for women, has been gained around the stomach and the, you know, the lower hip area. You know, and a lot of us are wondering now, how do we go back to actually getting rid of that? So the first thing about sitting is that, uh, you know, our, our life hasn't drastically changed on COVID. It's just a, a place you were sitting in. And this is something I had a debate with one of my physiotherapy friends. I'm like, listen, people were sitting in the offices. Now they're just sitting at home or lying down in the bed. Like, for example, I'm actually in my home during the COVID period of time. That's a bed behind me, right? So I could actually take this Zoom call lying down in bed. 
So that's what a lot of people did. In fact, I remember for the first month, I, I had to shout at my wife to get a table at home because she was like, oh, I'm so comfortable sitting on the laptop. I'm like, lying down is equivalent to smoking. Yes, that's absolutely right. In fact, the desk I have actually goes up and down so I can pull it up and down. Uh, so it, it morphs into a standing desk. Why standing? Because you tend to uh, kind of shift and move around a little bit more. So you're, you're getting more amount of um, blood circulation distribution and stuff like that. Um, how do you get your body back? Come to a nutritionist first. Learn to eat correctly. People, there's a huge mismatch between what I really need and what I'm actually eating. So one is there's a psychological displacement of of, of, of a denial that, oh, I know how much I should eat or I'm checking out what my friend is eating and therefore I'm following her intermittent fasting, her keto diet. And I think these one size that fits all, you know, it's like when you buy underwear or when you buy shoes, your friend says, these are great pair of shoes. You don't buy your friend's shoe size. You go and get your shoe size in that brand. So similarly for nutrition, I think there's something where uh, the first thing, if you want to get rid of belly fat is understand on blood tests and medical tests, what are the underlying conditions? And then let's do uh, your, your requirement of nutrition. Are you doing more? Are you doing less? And I'll talk about it in today's presentation on how there's a huge mismatch between uh, the actual body weight and muscle weight and fat weight. And then with we'll talk that, about how we can use the body to burn fat. With that, that's a great segue, Ryan. Let's get started on to the session for today. Wonderful. So I'm just going to share my screen with everyone. And, and the topic today that was requested was, uh, you know, about Valentine's Day. So, um, you know, at the end, at the end of the day, uh, give me a second. At the end of the day, truly, I believe that our body is our Valentine, you know, um, I remember the first time I thought about this, and I told my wife, I think, I think you're not my Valentine. I think I am my Valentine. And she was like, you could see her, you could see those, those thoughts going through her head, you know? And then after that, the storm starts, you know, it's like, what is he saying? And um, I said, hang on, hang on, babes. I just want to explain this to you. Like, suppose you die before me, or suppose you divorce me. You're not my life partner anymore. So who's with me? Myself, me, myself. So my body is with me and my mind is there. So I've got a life partner called my own true self. And every woman needs to understand this. Your body is your own Valentine first. Yes, you have your children. Yes, you have your husband. Yes, you have your brother. Yes, you have your sister. Yes, you have a mother, father and all. But think about it. We, we worry about everybody else around us except ourselves. So I think women need to have that seismic shift. On, you know what? I'm going to pay prasad to my body. I'm going to do puja to my body. I'm going to do it first because if I don't function well, then everybody else around me is going to suffer because I take care of everybody else. So for me, who is your real life partner? I do believe that your body is truly your real life partner. And having said that, uh, those of those of you attending today, thank you so much for attending because uh, I appreciate the fact that you're taking time out from your busy schedule and listening in to me. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm a nobody. I'm just a nutritionist. But the nutritionist is saying this to you. Whatever you put into your body, if it's good quality, your body is going to say, I just received a bouquet of roses from you. So the next time, you go out and eat that pani puri, that batata vada fried in that roadside stall. And it's like, no, no, this is street food. It's really, really good. Listen, your Valentine inside your body is literally taking out its slipper and beating you because you, you're not giving roses to your body. You're, you're, you're just giving gunk to your body. You're giving junk to your body. So keep that in mind. Now, how do you care for your body? It works into the physical, mental, and nutrition. I want to talk about this very quickly. I'll go through my presentation really fast because I know there are already questions banging in and I want to answer your questions because I think if I answer your questions, those are more important than me telling you what you. I think you already know. Physical. In the physical part, exercise, I would give you a benchmark of around, you need to do about 12 kilometers of walking a day, which is about 12,000 steps. If you have bad knees, don't do it. Get a good physio, go to a good physiotherapy clinic, get your body assessed, get your weight as, uh, assessed and see how much of exercise you should do. Get a blood test done and not the, not the hemoglobin only blood test. Get the blood test with all your vitamins and minerals, especially if you're over 30 years of age and you're planning a baby, blood test, very important. If you're 40 to 50, you're going to hit menopause at some time, full amount of blood test. Post 50, your bones are going to start deteriorating. Get a blood test. Post 60, you need to do a blood test every six months just to 
uh, just to beat the aging, uh, the aging curve. Uh, and finally, body assessment. I'll talk about body assessment. Body assessment is your weight, your height, your fat percentage, your muscle percentage. This is the screen that uh, I, I love uh, presenting at all seminars. Three women, if you see the first line right at top at the chest level, all of them are 54.8 kgs. But the three women are different sizes. Below that, everyone's like, oh, you know, I have a healthy BMI. Uh, sometimes that's not the right thing to look at. What you need to look at is your body fat percentage. Nowadays, you get weighing scales in the market on Amazon or any e-commerce site. And these weighing scales would give you your fat percentage. And the first question when we first started was a lady saying, I'm 60 years old, I can't give up carbs and my body fat percentage has gone up. How do I lose my belly fat and stuff like that? So you, you need to look at it this way. Fat in your body, ladies, is like a fixed deposit. Once you do the investment, it doesn't want to leave you because you've signed up for eight years. Eight years. Because the shelf life of the skin on my face is six weeks. The shelf life of my blood is three months. The shelf life of my stomach cells is 11 days. The shelf life of my fat cells in my body is eight years. So when you overdo it, one fat cell grows larger or smaller and you have thousands of fat cells. So they boom, boom. So, hey, I'm, I'm going on a new year's diet. I'm doing intermittent fasting. Boop, the fat cell shrinks down. Now, after doing three months, four months, five months, oh, okay, about a year of intermittent fasting. Okay, let me go back to my old diet. Boom, that fat cell goes back up again. And it's like, but why am I yo-yoing and stuff like that? So you need to have a lifestyle and a nutrition perspective for eight years. And no slimming clinic will tell you this. They're all conning women out there. Every time I, I walk past a slimming clinic, I'm like, dude, you guys are cheating people. You're conning people thinking that they can lose weight. Yeah, you could do liposuction, which physically takes out the cell. But if you have not changed your eating habit, you're going to get an, you're going to pro, your body has got the genetics or the software code to boom, put in another programming of a fat cell. So very, very important. You want to look at your fat percentage. Now, when you lose weight, don't lose your weight, lose your fat percentage, you know, because if you look right at the bottom, a lady with a lower body fat percentage, like the center lady has a 15.8, look at her waist, it's saying 15.8%. Right. And look at the last lady, her waist is saying 31%. Right. So look at the difference in the body ages. So body age is your metabolic age. There's statistics to calculate this. So it means if you had 31% body fat, then your age would be 35. It wouldn't be 25. So have you noticed ladies when you were younger, when you were in school or in college, slim, trim waist, right? You look younger, you felt younger. But as you began to pack on the fat, you begin to look older. So there is a there is a key area. Like when you're younger, a 15 to 20% body fat is perfect. When you're in childbearing phase, fertility zone, which is when you get married and want to have your kids, the best fat percentage is 20 to 25. So you always want to be below 25%. But women after pregnancy allow their body to, 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 I'll be brutal, okay? Indian women don't take care of themselves after their pregnancy. I have to take care of my husband. I have to take care of my baby. I have to eat for two people. I'll start working out two years later, three years later. Fat, all of you who have uh, and are going to go into childbearing phase or our grandmothers who are going to influence your daughters or daughter-in-laws, fat burning happens the day you start breastfeeding. If a mom's not working out when she's breastfeeding, she's losing the opportunity to, um, to target the fat burning. I'm currently working with Anushka Sharma and she's a, a, a wonderful example of how you need to get back to working out. You need to find the time. People say, I don't have the time. I guess what? Nobody has the time in the world. It's 24 hours for everybody else. The people that want their body back, people that want their health back, invest the time in their body. So 20 to 25% is where you want to be. And this metabolic age is the it drops. So uh, I've, I have one or two very fit women in my clinic and whilst their birth certificate or their driving, uh, their driver's license age, let's say will be 45, they, when they step on the scale in my clinic, they're at 36 years of age. So they're very tickle pink. Because when they're meeting their friends, they're like, you know what, I'm 36 years old lady. 
and and then you're like you're coming to Ryan Fernando you're stepping on his scale so when your friends come in they step on the scale and they're 40 like her or, or or you know 40 or 45 and suddenly the body age is 64 they're like the scale is broken the scale is not broken ma'am you are broken why are you broken because you've not understood the weight philosophy you're constantly chasing that 2 kg 2 kg 2 kg 2 kg 2 kg Ryan I lost 2 kg I got my cycle okay my cycle's gone now I put back it on so here's another declaration a woman will go up or down 3 kg if you go down 3 kg don't celebrate if you go up 3 kg don't celebrate that's that's evolution allowing you to go on up and down in terms of your weight but look at your fat percentage in that up and down it will be a water change it will not be a fat change so get the wing scale which tells you your fat percentage step on that once every 10 days otherwise you're going to drive people in your house up the wall because if you step on that every morning you're like right told me to check my fat percentage who oh, no my fat percentage is 29.3 tomorrow is 29.2 oh my god sometimes i think we're just getting to soap opera about our lives take a chill pill if you do your fat percentage once a month that's good enough if your fat percentage is coming down and your weight remains the same thumbs up if your weight is coming down and your fat percentage is coming down thumbs up if your weight is coming down and your muscle is coming down but your fat percentage is going up thumbs down so these are the small things that are there that you need to know now when i go to the gym uh there are a lot of these young aunties who run on the treadmill forgive the forgive this uh, the thing of young aunties these are young girls and when i go up to them i i i say aunty please don't run they look at me very angry like call it aunty but i know i'm calling them aunty because if they step onto my metabolic scale their body age is 60 years of age while they may be 12 years of age because their fat percentage is up now why they come to the gym they want to lose weight they may be getting married they may doctors told them to lose weight because they need to have a baby and they are overweight because doctor says they are at least 10 kg over their ideal body weight now running does not burn fat or weight now if you look at this graph over here that i have if you see the red color thing it's called fat and if you see the yellow yellow one it's called carbohydrate imagine you're like a cell phone and you have two batteries for your cell phone one battery is called fat and one battery is called carbohydrate you keep talking blah 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 the fat battery drops blah 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 carbohydrate battery starts running so similarly when you start working out your two batteries start dropping now when you do low intensity activity you use a larger portion of the fat battery as energy the moment you start running you burn more carbohydrate and less of fat so when i see people in the gym running like mad on the treadmill they say no 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 let them run they need to burn calories you might achieve better fat burning with walking they will argue no but they she will get more calorie burn if she runs yes she will but she might damage her knees and she will never be able to work out in the gym or walk again in the gym and as a result you set her up for life to break down her knees and never walk again and therefore she just keep on putting on weight and then she has only the swimming pool or pilates or maybe yoga to lose weight and she's lost the ability to walk or run when you run in the gym learn to run first most women do not know how to run you all run full bata 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 on the treadmill there's a way to run on the treadmill so if you do not know how to run if a coach has never taught you how to run if you have not done a gait g a i t analysis do not run in my gym my my trainer says sir you're making half of the women run away because you're going and telling them not to run they want to run i'm like but sir if they don't understand this in 3 months their knees are going to hurt they're not going to lose fat percentage they're going to be disappointed and the knee is hurting and they think their exercise doesn't work for them so they give up exercising for life one because of pain two because it's not working walk ladies please walk now here's the issue you need 12 12 kilometers which is 12000 steps that would take you about 1 hour 15 minutes 1 hour 20 minutes to do most women don't have that time i am not the time keeper of your life i can't give you a shortcut all i can say to you is that our ancestors walked more than us were physically more active than us did jadu pocha themselves walked up stairs and went to the market walking and carried bags back we have none of that we have big basket we have swiggy we have zomato so our lifestyles have changed completely which is why the gymming or the exercise scenario makes sense in modern day scenario to push the body so by the way uh 
when you're doing uh, so i use my exercise variable to track my heart rate when i did the um, uh, mopping during covid time uh, i had the best heart rate for fat burning because it's not so intense and it's not too low a big big bath towel on the floor squeeze it everything wet put one leg on each and walk around the whole house i don't use a mop i don't use a jadu nothing just a towel walk across the whole house the most amazing fat burning exercise okay so these are things that women need to understand your fat percentage walking is one of the best fat burning exercises and one question ryan when you say yes. walking should it be very brisk walking or what kind of walking just if you can clarify. there is a secret there is a secret which tells you how i can burn fat rate which is uh i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to spell this out for everyone it's 220 minus your age 220 minus your age so let's say i am 40 years of age so 220 minus 40 that gives me 180 so you write down that number whatever that number let's call that number x now multiply that number by 60% and multiply that number by 70% you'll get two numbers the range of that number so it's about uh, in a 40 year old it's about 118 to about 138 beats per minute so when you're walking the exercise variable will say oh you've gone to 140 slow down your walking if you're below 118 speed up your walking because in that 118 to 138 you move into your fat burning zone ryan what if i go beyond 138 then sukirti you're going into your cardiovascular zone which is your heart training you should train your heart for 5 minutes every workout but the rest of the workout is 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 a good walk and here's the thing if you're very fit and more fat if you're not fit you start walking you suddenly see your heart rate going very high so you go to carbohydrate which is why when people start working out they don't get results for the first year because your body's getting acclimatized to first getting your heart rate stable and when the heart rate becomes stable it starts going and slapping fat saying hey come on get out of the body get out of the body before that the body is slapping the heart saying you need to burn carbohydrate we can't do this exercise so all women realize this if you've never worked out in your life give your body one year before you really move into those brisk exercises and walking around otherwise slow walks yes you'll just get 300 to 400 grams of fat loss a month women you can never satisfy them they want 15 kgs weight loss in the first month that is promised to you by all these slimming centers doesn't work doesn't work doesn't work i know most of you are leaving my session right now because hey this guy is going to promise us some uh, you know some quick fix method that he gave to anushka sharma where you know you i can lose 5 kgs fat i promise you there's nothing like that yes there are drugs that are out there but those damage your ovaries damage your livers and uh, really uh, they actually ban substances which nobody on the planet really takes any more so i hope sukriti i've answered your question yes, thank you so uh, this is the slide that i made for my mother my mother is 74 uh, she's the most gorgeous woman on the planet in my opinion my wife's not over here i hope she's not watching this but whatever said and done uh, i made this slide for my mommy because um, muscle is the only age reversible organ and i'm trying to get my mom so i bought her two dumbbells and she was like she looked at me many very quizzically she's like are these paper weights you know because they were like 2.5 kg and i said no mom you need to use uh, weight training she says why would i do that i'm very old i can go for a walk i said mom listen when you take your muscle and put a certain load on it like oh you have to you have to do more than your body weight so let's say i'm doing a bicep curl okay for those of you who have never done weight training that's what i'm doing i'm doing a bicep curl okay so my bicep is working out it's like saying you lift the handi off the stove and the handi has got 15 kg of biryani in it now you take that 15 kg of biryani to serve your family and you do 15 reps like that that's called weight training when we subject our body to resistance training the muscle grows now when a woman hires a personal trainer and goes to a gym and does resistance training she reverses the age of her body so my suggestion to you is that muscle is the only age reversible organ all women hate weight training because they assume they will become bulky like men i can tell you i have seen over the last 10 years women working out heavy and they look fitter and more toned than women with bulbous cellulite based thighs so the science is telling you that weight training reverses the age of your of your muscle Uh, tightens up your body burns more fat and makes you younger 
yes, your skin may go older, but uh, I have seen women uh, across the world who weight train uh, in their 65, 70 <clears throat> age wise, they don't look a day over 48, 50. So it's very, very important for women to understand that weight training helps, helps menopause, weight training helps uh, bone density, weight training helps you from imbalances where you will fall down and break your hip at a later stage in life. Uh, weight training helps improve your sex drive in later years. Weight training actually makes you fitter and stronger from an independence point of view. Uh, and I, whenever I work with elderly women clients, the one thing that they say to me is, we want to be independent. You know, because all our lives we've depended on somebody. And now that my family, my husband, everybody's all okay and all, I want to be independent. And independence would come with very good fitness in your body because you could weather any storm. Meditation, I'm not an expert, but I do know that if you meditate, your heart rate comes down. That affects your hormones, which make you calmer, uh, reduces cortisol. Cortisol is the fat storage hormone. And uh, so, so basically what, what, uh, what my mind coach friends say is that get a woman to develop a hobby because they always focus on family and, and, and the children and everything else except themselves. Uh, when you spend time with loved ones, it's more about uh, less of jadu, pocha, cooking, cleaning, studies, and interacting with your family. And meditation uh, works, uh, works great. In nutrition, uh, I work with genetics. You're, you're born from your mother and father and you get a you get a computer code from either one of them which tells you you'll be gluten intolerant, you'll develop thyroid, you'll develop diabetes, you'll be fat, you'll be slim, you'll be short, you'll be tall, you'll have curly hair, you'll have short hair, you'll have blue eyes, you'll have green eyes. All of these codes that are pre-written. But these codes can get corrupted by the way you eat, the way you think, the way you behave in your life. Um uh, in nutrition, I always look at people and ask them, do you have any medical history when they come to me? And I'm going to talk about a little bit about uh, a few of these things. But I, for today's thing, before I get into question, I just want to give you a simple few tips, okay? Every woman should have this. And like, you know how they say, every woman should have this in her fashion closet. Uh, every woman should have this pair of shoes in her, in her, in her uh, wardrobe. And every woman should have this in her handbag. I'm telling you, these are the foods that you need to have in your kitchen and on your plate. Black seeds, tofu, soya bean. Tofu is fermented soy. Yes, people say, oh, but soy is uh, phytoestrogen. Is it good for women? It is good for women, um, uh, especially uh, people who are crossing 35, 40, unless you have a soybean allergy. Sesame, dry fruits, uh, the, these, are, these, are all, these are all things that you can take. Antioxidant-rich foods. So, so for me, basically, um, what are antioxidants? These are municipal cleaners inside your body. You know, our city, the municipality cleans up the city and everything, right? So inside your body, there's a lot of tamasha, garbage and everything that comes out every day. Your stress, your trouble, your worries, blah, blah, blah. The bell puri that you eat, the uh, uh, chola batura that you eat on the roadside stall, all that goes in and full kachara bachara happens inside. And there's a, there's a damage that's happening inside your body. So there are certain foods, which especially colorful fruits and vegetables, like purple cabbage, red cabbage, uh, purple jamuns, uh, you know, blueberries. Now, I put up blueberries over here because they've got one of the highest ORAC score, um, oxygen radical absorption capacity. Simple English. It's like the it's like the, the Mac of makeup. It's like blueberries are the Mac of Mac of foods. It's like it's like super premium. Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce level, good stuff. But Ryan, we don't get blueberries in India. Oh wow, Indian gooseberry. That's also like Mercedes Benz level. Dark chocolate. Women are like, whoa, Ryan Fernando, dark chocolate. Yes, ma'am. Dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. Yes, ma'am. Dark chocolate. Not our Indian brands, huh? which they are faking to us with 60% uh, milk and 20%, 30% chocolate and only 10% chocolate. Uh, sorry, 20% sugar, 60% uh, milk and only 20% uh, chocolate. What do you want to do? You want 70 to 80% chocolate, almost no milk and almost no sugar. So the dark chocolate is what's really going to have the most powerful antioxidants. So uh, even I, myself personally, I'll eat a credit card size piece of chocolate almost every second day, but it's, it's just like 90%. I mean, I'm eating it not because it's chocolate, chocolate of Cadbury, which I grew up on, but because the chocolate has the highest cleaning potential to go into my body and do the anti-aging process. For women, helps in your menstrual cramps. So when you, when you, when you have those sugar cravings during your cycle time, that's the body trying to tell you, hey, lady, wake up. 
I need more minerals in my body. So let's go back caveman time, 2000 years ago. Oh, caveman time. I've got my cravings. I've got, I've got my, I've got my, I've got my periods coming. I've got cravings. Let me go find the nearest papaya tree, mango tree. And then I eat those fruits generously because it gives me the minerals and prepares me for ovulation so that when I conceive, I carry my baby into the fertilization zone very, very easily. So rewind uh, forward back to 2021. Dark chocolate represents really good uh, craving potential, but it is not the commercial brands that we get. Like For, the, for example, the other day I went and uh, there was a very famous Indian brand from which we buy milk. You all know the brand. I can't take the name. And I was like, whoa, it touched, no, it was dark chocolate. I'm like, wow, dark chocolate. And it's written nice brown color packet and orange logo. Okay. So the brand writes dark chocolate in big. And I turn it like, I'm telling my wife, hey, dark chocolate, this brand has launched it. I look at it. Uh, 800 grams contains uh, 50 grams sugar. Oh, 50 grams sugar. It's not dark chocolate. It's dark sugar. Right? So ladies and any gentlemen that are watching, Whenever you pick up an item in the supermarket today, companies are conning us, conning us left, right, and center. Conning is not the word. It's like topi lagate. And if you're educated and you're buying this stuff, no, all I can say is you're a real bakra. Because you need to understand they're putting sugar in there. You're biting it and you're going, ah, oh, so lovely. I'm saying to you, buy dark chocolate, look at 70 to 90%. So they can't put anything else in there. And by the way, when they put 70 to 90% chocolate, it's freaking expensive because sugar is cheaper than chocolate. By the way, most of your chocolate flavored items, they do not put real chocolate. One month ago, I told one of my guys, I want to design a designer whey protein. I want organic whey. I want the cows to eat organic grass. I want the cows from Switzerland to get Swiss milk. And I want the best chocolate in the world put into my whey protein. The guy came back with a costing of 7,000 bucks for a kg of whey. I said, bhai, ye kya ho gaya? Kaisa ho gaya? Market mein 2,000 mein mil rahe. That too, 2.5 kgs. He says, sir, that is chocolate flavor. I said, please expand. What do you mean? Sir, they take a chemical and they know the formula of chocolate, they'll produce a pseudo chemical, that nasha and that flavor will come in your nose and your taste bud, but it is a cheating, sir. I'm like, cheating sir. So unless it says real chocolate. So you know when people put Belgium chocolate, Ghana chocolate, topi lagate. Because you're not scraping real cocoa beans and putting that in you. The real cocoa beans is the one that contains the true essence of antioxidants and chocolate, which is good for your body. So when Ryan Fernandez says chocolate is good for your body, he's talking about the real chocolate with no sugar and none of these topiwala chocolates that you're getting. Okay. Uh, you can get beans, green tea, K, tea. Green tea is really good. Okay, Green tea really works on the eye barrier. Uh, for those of you who do not know me and hearing me for the first time, I have hundreds of uh, videos on YouTube, on my YouTube channel about green tea, how it crosses the eye barrier. So if you want to learn more about nutrition, you could go there. I also have a teaching school called institutenutrition.com. So you could go there and learn about nutrition uh, directly if you want to know more in-depth stuff. So... Negative calorie food. So this is a concept which I really don't agree much with, but I've seen it works. Okay. So when you eat an apple and you eat a, uh, when you eat a mango, mango is going to go inside your body and say, Oh, Mr. Ryan, I'm going to give you a lot of sugar today. And then my muscles will say, sir, today we don't need any sugar. Hey, come, Kuru, sir, you go to his liver no, and just store all the sugar as fat over there. So liver says, boss, boss, I have no place over here. Do one thing. Mr. Fernando, a slight belly. No? Just go next to his abdominal belly. That happens to you and me, both male and female. Huh? This doesn't happen only to uh, uh, males. It happens to females. When you eat an apple, apple goes in and it's like, hey, salam sahab, I'm apple. Liver says, oh, boss, you're coming here. Okay, please digest. You're a useless fellow, man. You come into my body. You have very, very little sugar to give me. So, uh, you know, I actually have to spend more energy on maintaining you in my body. Oh, so when I eat a cucumber, when I eat a apricot, carrot, celery, chili, peppers, apple, these guys don't, don't contribute too much of calorie to my body. So these are more like the guys that would take in a weight loss program, right? But if you eat five apples a day, 
uh, th that's also kind of like uh, cheating your body, like you're giving too much of nutrition. But we use these foods as fillers when people say they have cravings, they want to lose weight, we want to reduce the portion of the amount of grain and rice and chapati that they eat. So we use negative calorie foods. Dalcini cinnamon, our research has actually shown it helps in uh, reducing sugar levels, boosting insulin sensitivity. And as a result, I have used cinnamon uh, in monitoring women who have sweet cravings, as well as helping them lose body fat percentage. If I give you only cinnamon and don't do anything else like diet monitoring, diet preparation and proper foods and proper protein, then cinnamon won't work. Cinnamon works in conjunction with a holistic nutrition plan. Apple cider vinegar works for five people, doesn't work for five people. So apple cider vinegar is one of those guys on the seesaw. I'll try it out with a woman and I'll see if apple cider vinegar over three months, the fat percentage is coming down. If it's coming down, boom, 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 boom. I use it more aggressively. If it doesn't come down, I'm like, okay, listen, ma'am, this doesn't work for you. And people say, Ryan, why are you experimenting on me? And I actually give the answer saying that, listen, everybody's bio-individual. The concept is I've got to figure out what works for you, what, what doesn't work for you. And a lot of times people don't know how to track what works for them or doesn't work for them. You know, you'll do a diet based on your friend saying, taking apple cider vinegar with celery juice early morning and at night, but nothing happens to you because you're not corrected your entire nutrition or you have a nutritional deficiency from your blood test. So you got to work at this on from a, from a complete level, okay? Uh, green tea does work to a certain extent to raise your metabolism, but I've never found a person who drank only green tea and lost weight. It doesn't work. But there was this corporate in Bangalore where I convinced 30 people to drink only green tea and another group, 30 people drink normal chai and coffee. When we did the calculation, we found out that the, the, the group that drinks two or three cups of tea with milk or coffee with milk and sugar were gaining three and a half kgs per year because they were getting 55,000 calories extra in the full year. Whereas those who drank green tea got zero calorie. So the concept of drinking tea in India is chai with dood and sugar. So if you want to look at weight loss, black tea, oolong tea, I just I just finished a meeting today at two o'clock. I ordered an oolong tea. He asked me, sir, you wanted with milk and, and sugar. I said, no, please, please hold the milk. Please hold the sugar. Just a simple pot, brewed pot of black tea. And uh, that's, that's amazing for anti-cancer, eye health, heart health, uh, boosting your metabolism. A few, few uh, supplements that I love to give people is vegan protein powders, collagen. Uh, collagen is one of my favorite for women. It reduces fine line wrinkles. I have a small giveaway, a gift giveaway contest at the end of my lecture today. Uh, but uh, collagen is a non-veg product extracted from marine bones. If you're in the West, it's extracted from cow bones. But in India, they use the marine bones. Why should you take a collagen? Because if your protein in your diet is lacking, then I can boost it by giving you non-veg or, or, or vegetarian sources of protein. But here's the point. Uh, certain amino acids, which are building blocks that are found in collagen, are not found in many food products in nature. And those two amino acids, proline and hydroxyproline, are responsible for your skin health and uh, your joint health, your tissue health. Uh, works miracles, works miracles on age and, and making really good. Plant protein. A lot of people are allergic to whey protein, casein protein, what we call as your charge or, 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 your, or your lassi. So I tell people that you can uh, bump up your protein using a plant-based protein like green pea protein, uh, brown rice protein, and these come as commercial powders. I'll be honest with you. Um, I don't take any supplement because I don't feel the need to because I eat very disciplined. Uh, my wife does the intermittent fasting and she probably does just two meals a day. So she takes a protein supplement because if she has to eat a lot of protein, she's bumping up her calories. So she takes a protein supplement. The problem with the protein supplement is if you don't take fiber with it, you don't eat enough of salad or things like apple or coconut water, you might get constipated. So, so watch for that. Glutamine. Glutamine is the, an amino acid and it's a bop of the immune system. It's a bop of your stomach. Uh, it, 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 it works wonders. If you have cough, colds and fevers, five grams of glutamine in any, any juice that you prepare. But again, uh, don't take these products because I'm seeing them uh, in, the, in the context of the lecture. Uh, um, these products should be taken under advice of your doctor, family doctor. I doubt they'll know anything about nutrition because I studied in a medical college and doctors know jack shit about nutrition. No offense to any doctors in this forum right now, but you know it, you did not study nutrition in college. Both my in-laws are doctors and our breakfast table discussions are amazingly heated. 
because you, you do not know how food can help the body. Okay. And, and from a perspective of thyroid, PCOD, uh, joint pain, people in my family from the medical side of the doctors in my family, which is basically my in-laws have had so much of problems. When I married into the family 11 years ago, boom, in four years, all of these problems disappeared. Why? Because we altered the nutrition based on the deficiencies that we found out. The doctors don't do that. The doctors don't ask you for a blood test where they're checking all your vitamins and minerals. Ask anyone who's 40 years of age. In the last 20 years, doctors never asked for vitamin B12 and vitamin D. Now, because media is saying vitamin B12 and vitamin D, now doctors are asking for B12 and vitamin D. I am saying I ask for 72 parameters to know your deficiencies so that you can then put that in. We do gene testing. So that's when we put products like this. So please... Don't fix your own car. Please don't curl your own hair. Please don't uh, do your own waxing. Please don't do your own servicing of your car. Please don't try and disassemble your computer. These are all done by experts. Yes, but when it comes to your food, you are the expert. All right, let's go to stress busting. I'm, I'm, I'm not getting stressed out. I'm just getting very excited right now. And I think I need to move faster so that we can get into the Q&A. Okay, stress busting. Eat an orange. Eat uh, sesame seeds. Till laddu is, no, is known to reduce blood pressure. So ladies, if your husbands are like me, where we flare up suddenly, my wife comes and puts a sesame laddu in my mouth. Okay, hey, kalo. It drops my BP within about 10, 15 minutes. Banana, green tea, blueberries. By the way, Japanese have shown that green tea enhances creative thinking and relaxes the mind. So those of you who are creative, architects, painters, musicians, cup of green tea boosts creativity. A few other tips that are there. Don't microwave your food. Just don't do it. I can do a five-hour lecture on this, but don't microwave your food. Throw your microwave out from the third floor or use it as a safe. No, no thief will bother to look into your microwave of kept in the kitchen. You can aram say put 20, 30, 40, 50,000 rupees in that. Nobody will even touch it. Keep the microwave in your hall. Okay. And put one lock on it. People think, Are, yaar, microwave kya hai? Kuch hai iska hai. Okay. Chew your food. Use smaller bowls. Avoid distraction. Women, don't text and eat. Don't watch TV and eat. You eat more. Be very mindful of what you're, what you're eating. Okay. Uh, don't compromise on your sleep time. Don't compromise on your sleep time. I'm doing a lot of research on sleep science. I'm tracking my sleep. I work with a few companies that track my sleep. Uh, I use a device called the Earth Pulse, which puts me to sleep. Or two magnets under my bed, wakes me up in the morning, tracks everything and all of that stuff. Supposed to be anti-aging, blah, 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 all of those things. There's one thing that I've been able to track. The day I sleep lesser than six hours, you can see my blood parameters and my heart rate going bad. Six months later, I'm getting more gray hair. So research is already doing this. If you want the simple thing, start sleeping and getting more than seven hours of sleep, ladies, you will age gracefully. You will have lesser problems. The problem with women in India, they're sleeping under seven hours. There's no compromise on this. I, I don't have a solution. Stay hydrated. Drink a lot of water. Drink a lot of water. Drink a lot of water. So... I am on Instagram and I am on Facebook as Ryan Fernando Nutrition Coach. This is my handle, Ryan Nutrition Coach. Uh, and I am on Facebook also. Um, I want to give away uh, stuff to people. This collagen dabba, I'm giving away 10 of these dabbas worth 4,000 rupees. Follow me on my Instagram profile. Okay. And um, you need to share my posts, which come up on nutrition on your profile. Share my post to your story and tag me as Ryan Nutrition Coach. You need to do this for the next 10 posts. So I'm giving away 10 dabbas uh, of collagen uh, to 10 lucky winners who follow me and tag me on the post. And let's take questions now. Sure, there are lots of them. I'm just going to stop sharing your slides. Okay, we'll go back to the favorite question which Neeta Banga is asking. How to reduce belly fat? Cannot quit carbs at the age of 60 and crunches are too difficult to do. I do do yoga and walk at least four kilometers a day, six times a week. So, uh, I mean, I, I noticed that question as soon as we started. And um, so let's break it down for a 60-year-old. First thing, you can't lose it immediately. So the first thing is to take a weight measurement with a fat percentage. Know the percentage of body fat around your tummy, and you'll have something known as visceral fat. Visceral fat is a fat near the organs. I'll be honest with you. I told you it's eight years to get rid of fat cells. So what you need to do is you need to have a quarterly plan where you lose 0.5% per quarter. 
that's the first step the goal setting you need to reduce your visceral fat with walking which means you have to do around 10000 to 15000 steps a day you should not do crunches because you have a you will have a weaker spine as you grow older so what we want to do is you want to take the static exercises like yoga which target the core muscles uh, you want to do things like plank uh, 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 things that are the 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 there there are, i'm not an expert on 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 exercise but there are a lot of well, if you google up static uh, abdominal workouts where static means you hold and you don't you don't do a motion which tires out or breaks your bones uh, the other thing that you can do is include foods that are a fat burner uh, in your diet so the cinnamon uh, can help the green tea can help uh if you want expert help uh, to know the fat percentages then walk into our qua nutrition clinics i have a team of dietitians that work with ladies across the world so we look at your blood test we look at a genetic test why genetic test uh i had this one lady who never lost she wanted to lose 5 kg she's 58 kg then all her life she wanted to be 53 kg she couldn't lose weight she says rain i'll pay you any amount of money but i want to be 53 kg i'm like ma'am you don't need to do that let's just do a genetic test we found out that she was gluten intolerant and lactose intolerant she gave up these two foods and before she came back for the diet so i take all of the diet you call and i take about 7 days to prepare a chart and get it ready and then call you back to submit your monday to sunday nutrition plan 7 days later when she came back she was like dude my weighing scale is down by 1 and 1/2 kg already and i didn't believe her so i made her stand on the weighing scale and when he looked at it it was not water loss it was all fat loss and in the history of my clinic i never had a 1 and 1/2 kg fat loss in a month sorry in a week so for me the perspective is that maybe there's something that's constantly creating inflammation in your body inflammation is telling cortisol keep storing fat keep storing fat keep storing fat when you try and do an exercise you try to do a diet that level of how much of fat you're losing versus how much you're adding back again is at status quo so you've got to get your fat burning higher and your diet lower but your diet at 16 nita cannot be uh, deficient and that's the biggest problem in what we call as geriatric nutrition that i sincerely advise people above 60 to not do any aggressive diets aggressive supplementation it needs to be slow and steady slow and steady is a 3 year plan so how much should you lose of body fat you should lose about 2 kg of body fat and next question it doesn't happen only from your tummy because women store fat mostly in their hips their thighs their butt and the abdomen so this area of storage you need to understand why it happens in women you see as your estrogen starts coming down and you go into menopause the body by evolution says fat cells can produce pseudo estrogen i repeat estrogen is your good friend that keeps you slim trim and keeps you fertile as estrogen starts coming down it calls up its other friend mr fat hey mr fat i'm getting older i'm leaving her body so now you need to take over why because evolution has told me that when more fat comes up i'm able to produce pseudo estrogen so i can help and enable in her looks and maybe give her another 4 5 years of menopause and stuff like that so this is what happens to women as they move towards the menopause the fat percentage starts going up and it is about 8 to 10 kgs and if you have to burn 8 to 10 kg you need to you need to lose 9000 negative calories a month which is equivalent to a diligent 3 hours of walking every day for 30 days before you can lose 1 kg of fat and that's why people don't lose because they say i work out but it's not enough so you you got to look at this uh the other things that i would recommend is you could look at liposuction which is a surgical procedure to take out the fat but it's it's dependent on your doctor family doctor and everything the other something known as cool cool sculpting cool sculpting is where they they suck up the skin and it's exposed to very 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 cold temperature and basically it does hypothermia to the fat cells so after 3 months the the death of the fat cells is faster so you do you do hypothermia to the fat cells which is cool sculpting you do a, a good a good nutritious protein diet which doesn't keep you constipated with high fiber figure out all the foods you're allergic to figure out your genetics set this on a pathway and um, uh, that's the way to do it There, there's no shortcut at an older age there's only uh, science and how to do it correctly
All right. Jay, that was too long I, an answer, I think. Yeah, I know. Jay Huja is asking this question, and I think many of us are probably suffering from this. I eat small, moderately active, 44-year-old, but strangely, in the lockdown times, I've gained eight kgs, and I really don't know why. And I'm a com comfortable with this strange weight gain, and what can be the reason, and what should I do? So we have had a lot of women get a weight gain. The first thing is women say to me that uh, I've got it in the lockdown. They say that they're eating the same amount and, and there's no proof to say that you've eaten the same amount, you've eaten less or you've eaten more. There's no proof. So I would say that maybe I can blame food because you're not aware currently, uh, number one. Number two, the physical activity that happened pre-COVID, that may have been reduced. So there's lesser physical activity. Third, people were going to gyms or working out yoga. Those were shut down. People are too afraid to go out. So even now, many of my clients are just working out at home. So that workout at home is not probably the same intensity as when maybe you walk into the gym. Why? Because when you won't walk into the gym, wow, everyone's looking at me. Maybe I need to run a little faster, you know, from that perspective. I need to push better. And so there are a lot of elements to all of this. But one key underlining thing, which is, I do believe that uh, this lady who's asking this question, her thyroid or her vitamin D or her vitamin B12 have changed in the uh, COVID period. And because there is a deficiency of it, the metabolism in her has, uh, has imploded, has, has become lower. And so she's eating and, and then that's contributed to the weight gain. Final point is, you know, we said at the beginning, we are sitting down a lot during this COVID period, there's lesser physical activity. Uh, and that could be a, a key culprit to the, to the weight gain. Also, another key culprit is no sun exposure. Uh, the sun activates feeling of um, well-being, goodness, uh, energetic feelings. And final thing that, no, that everyone's talking about, stress, 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 stress. I mean, I have not seen a woman who has not been stressed in COVID. Every woman has gotten humongously stressed in COVID because one, obviously, she, most women who are listening in on this forum are, are, are modern affluent Indians and uh, they do have a job or they do have a work, uh, plus they run their families and they're dependent on domestic help. So when you suddenly shorted that system, uh, there a lot of pressure and stress came on the women. Yes, a lot of husbands were helping their wives, but I, I think it's just the mental torture that the woman's the leader and the torchbearer. I think that weighed down on a lot of people and therefore cortisol as a stress hormone could be the reason. But don't leave it unchecked because that fat cell is going to remain with you for eight years. So now it's taken residence in your body and saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to be here for the next eight years. And you want to be like, no, I'll get back to it. I'll do it. You need to work. Women, you need to, the moment you see a weight gain, you need to figure out, is it in my blood test? Is it in my genetics? Is it in my diet? Or is it in my lack of exercise? And then figure out what you need to do. Ryan, may we request you to extend the session by 10 minutes to take a couple of more questions? Absolutely. Let's do this. All right. Tina is asking, now that you've talked about this scale, is there a particular scale that measures all these parameters that you would recommend? Yes, there is a scale um, um, called, the, uh, I'm typing this up in the chat box, it's called the Omron Parada Scan HBF, uh, uh, I think it's HBF 365 something. Now, this is the expensive one. This is about 9,900. Uh, but you get a lot of other scales from MI, uh, you get a lot of scales from Omron with just basic fat check, which is about 2,000 rupees. So, now, so, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so basically people ask, how accurate is this? The most accurate is called a DEXA scan, which is like an X-ray. You don't need accuracy, women. You need a, a daily, uh, sorry, not a daily, every 10 days a checkup to think, is your fat going in the right direction? Is your muscle going in the right direction? If you have this data, it's great. Check your body weight first thing in the morning after going to the toilet don't have too much of water and all when you get onto the wing scale. So it's like, get up, empty your bowels, stand on the wing scale, then start your one liter of lemon water, blah, 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 whatever it is that you else that you do. So Grace is asking, what are the overall prerequisites for a woman who's planning to get pregnant? Oh, huge, huge amount of stuff. So uh, when we recently, so we've recently become very famous because we worked with Anushka Sharma, but uh, long before this, we have been doing pregnancy at Koa Nutrition Clinics is where I practice. And uh, here's the thing, okay? I always, I always tell couples, do not have an accidental pregnancy. They're like, what do you talk about accidental? Like, oh, hello, I'm pregnant. Were you planning? No, but I just got pregnant. That's accidental pregnancy. 
you need to have a planned pregnancy what is a planned pregnancy your husband's sperm and your egg they carry that dna for the future generation when it comes together now you are drinking he's drinking he's smoking you're partying late night stress blah 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 accidental pregnancy guess what the code that is going to your kid is morphed is crappy and guess what we are having i'm having only one kid i'm having only one kid those of you are having two kids wow you're you're really brave in the new century but we are not doing it like our parents who had cricket teams and stuff like that so this one child needs the best possible investment and women are having children much later and so when they're having children much later i see this in society where they want to prove at the workplace they want to prove to their families but they don't want to take care of the body so anyone getting getting ready to get pregnant number one know your bmi know your weight know what is a healthy body weight do a blood test to figure out any nutritional vitamin or mineral deficiencies before you even start planning a pregnancy get your husband also on the same thing eating better if both of you have higher body fat percentage start walking start exercising start dreaming get that off eat organic eat organic eat organic why because all the foods have pesticides and insecticides so whatever goes into your body you want lesser chemicals going into you uh uh do 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 some amount of weight training for women because when you conceive your back is going to take about 8 to 9 kg of load in your belly which is like doing a 20 to 30 kg deadlift every day for the whole day so women start strengthening your back even before you decide to get pregnant so most women get pregnant then they are they are having morning sickness in the first trimester they can't work out guess what by the time the second trimester comes in doctor says you know what just walk like if you go to a doctor in america is like yeah yeah you can do everything in india like just walk i'm like so i don't i don't trample on any gynecologist or obstetrician's legs my mother in law is a gynecologist so we have very amazing uh, discussions about this and i'm like why don't you all just like listen if the if the if the kid aborts the parents blame us the doctors so i'm thinking that when somebody wants a planned pregnancy get a good trainer pilates get a good nutritionist with you get to the perfect body weight find out any nutritional deficiencies uh and um, uh, yeah have a stress free life uh, so my personal story with my wife was that uh, she had PUS, pcod and thyroid and we solved everything and all but she was working in the garment industry and it's a very stressful industry and i know this because she would dream and she would talk in her sleep right so i was like dude this is really serious if you're talking about your job in your sleep it's really stressful right so imagine if we conceive a baby and she's in stressed mode that bun is in the oven that fetus is in the oven and that oven is extremely stressed out imprinting imprinting is when the dna and the and the and the, the making of all the cells is happening and your your as a mother your nutrition is bad your weight is bad your uh, office surroundings are bad so don't be in a toxic environment don't be in a toxic relationship uh don't be in anything toxic you should be happy that's the, that's the prerequisites for a, a woman planning to to bring in a new life into the planet so tina is asking now you're in your 40s weight training and cardio a mix of both so how much should you be doing weight training how much cardio I can't honestly answer that to Tina specifically because I would be looking at body uh, height, weight, what muscle percentage she has, and everything. So there is no thumb rule. But people who have not worked out and are a little bit on the unfit side—I wouldn't say fat; I would say unfit. Like you get a lot of women are slim, trim, but they are forty percent body fat. I'm like, dude, you're not fit. Okay. So such women should start off with a little bit of weight training because when the moment they start running and all, they could damage the body because it's not used to it. You you probably last ran the lemon and spoon race in twelfth standard or eleventh standard, and after that there's not been any physical activity. So I always tell women weight training. If you're unfit, start off do slow and steady, then start adding adding cardio. So that ratio would be like eighty percent weight training and twenty percent walking. A month later, seventy percent weight training, thirty uh, percent walking. A month later, sixty percent weight training, forty percent walking. A month later, fifty percent weight training, forty percent walking, and ten percent cardio, which is sprinting and stuff like that. Normally, what happens when people go to the gym nowadays? Everyone's put on the treadmill, run, bago. and you get you get what is known as repetitive stress injuries so uh, i would recommend tina to 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 get in touch with us at qua nutrition figure it out with your nutritionist dietitian get your body into shape once it's into shape uh, we we have the necessary expertise in our company to guide you on 
whether you should weight train or you should strength train or you should do pilates or walking now ridhi is asking we are good gerd problem is there yes. a specific diet for that yes so gastro uh, gastro uh, um, esophageal reflux disorder that's what it's called good is there a sphincter at the top of your throat where the acid starts coming up gerd happens because women may have too much of belly fat had a bad pregnancy or overweight or uh, basically it could be genetic where the sphincter is loose now normally what doctors do is they give you uh, anti acids which reduce the production of your acid so even if the acid escapes that valve and hits your throat where you get a dry cough or burning sensation uh, the medication is able to uh, lower it but in diet there is a specialized diet called the gerd diet uh, and uh we do a lot of focus on helping people lose the belly fat because when you have a lot of belly it pushes on your stomach and pushes your entire stomach and the contents of the acid in the stomach and it forces it upwards literally you can say your heart is your your stomach is in your throat so that that valve is under pressure so the moment we reduce we reduce all the belly fat that is there the stomach is able to drop and you're you're far better so weight loss uh gerd nutrition plan uh i do have a team of medical nutritionists who handle gerd there's no off the cuff advice that you can give but it's treatable it's long term basis i would say 1 to 1 and a half years to get it sorted oh wow okay harvinder is asking this is again a big big problem the weight plateau all of a sudden you're in a good thing you get into you losing weight and then you get that plateau so so the weight the weight plateau happens to everybody it's happened to amir khan it's happened to shil kumar it's happened to shikhar dhawan why is there a weight plateau there's a weight plateau because your body is saying i need to keep you at homeostasis the evolution has said if you're going through a famine period i'm going to help you survive so that you don't wither away and die and if there's periods of uh, plentiful i won't allow you to gain so much of weight so there's a there's a gene in our body uh, ppaarg gene that controls the deposition fto gene also controls the up and down of fat uh when a person hits a plateau you need to ask yourself what's my fat percentage is there any vitamin b12 vitamin d deficiency is my protein correct in my diet uh can i do a quick change about of my diet and maybe shock the body into a keto or a high a high protein diet low carb diet uh but again i'm making a public declaration that i don't endorse uh, any one size fits all diet like keto if people ask me is keto safe i say no is keto safe i say yes like are you confused no mm-hmm. i'm i'm just telling people it's a yes or no it's based on bio individuality so for plateau there is no fixed answer the correct answer would be to get an amazing trainer and get a good nutritionist because two of these people will understand what your body is going through and what is the next step that you need to do so sometimes you need to press the accelerator for a lot of women is because they're working out so much you need to lift off the accelerator i had a lady who went on holiday from january to uh, bring of january to end of january i told her don't work out you're going to maldives spend a month over there just swim for 10 15 minutes in the pool every day walk on the beach enjoy yourself eat what you want she came back with 5% body fat loss and she says what have i done i said you ate a lot of seafood you ate a lot of protein you ate a lot of vegetables i told you don't touch carbs so we went on a low uh, carb diet she didn't exercise so there was no stress of exercise so some of the body just went whoa this is amazing and fat came down so there's there's a lot of things that can happen uh, in different people i'm going to take the last question because i also have this problem and i think a lot of women do hypothyroid any hmm. basic nutrition or something that we should take care of so every woman who has a thyroid issue ask yourself this question there's something known as tsh thyroid stimulating hormone now doctor immediately gives you medication so it directly gives you the thyroid medication if somebody is making a problem in your house right somebody is making a problem in your house will you go and call the cops to stand in your house every day that's medicine instead you go to the crux of the problem what's the crux of the problem tsh requires 10 nutrient molecules in your body just google this up what are the nutrients for thyroid stimulating hormone thyroid stimulating hormone so the pituitary releases thyroid stimulating thyroid goes to the uh, to the thyroid say beta beta thyroid produce karo na t3 t4 kar do are yaar tum kya bolta hai tsh to uh, mazboot nahi hai the, the tsh is very dheela 
Why? Because the nutrition in the lady is not good enough. And what is the nutrition? Vitamin D, vitamin C, magnesium, uh, chromium, selenium, zinc, iron. So most of the women who are anemic, iron is low, boom, hey, huh? not only hemoglobin, your, your thyroid is getting affected. So the number one rule to people would be, can you focus on these nutrients and get them up, get a thyroid support via nutrition? And there are certain foods like millets uh, and, 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 and uh, like ragi and, and uh, broccoli and uh, strawberries and spinach that you shouldn't be eating. But I'm of, the, I'm of a new school. I'm like, you can eat all of that. Uh, even if you're on thyroid medication, you need to figure out why your thyroid is underperforming. And I'll make this statement to whoever's listening in over here. Issues with thyroid are starting with gluten in your diet. You may not be gluten sensitive. You may not be celiac. People will call me an idiot. But 20 years later, mark my words, it will come out in society that gluten from wheat and barley and rye is one of the major culprits that attacks your thyroid, your pancreas, and your gallbladder. You heard it here first. Ryan, I know I keep saying last question, last question, but should we take a multivitamin? And that is my last question. <laughs> uh, yes and no. Uh, the reason a woman should take a multivitamin is because she has nutritional deficiency and maybe her doctor or her nutritionist has advised it. Should she take it on her own? The, the risk element is there if she continuously takes it because the vitamin A's, the vitamin D's and the vitamin E's and the multivitamin are fat soluble and those store in high levels. So you won't go to a toxic level, but uh, you could go to a level which is, um, you know, there's, there's a competition in your body. So what I would say to anybody who, who's self-prescribing. You shouldn't be doing it, but I know people still do it. So if you're doing it, do a multivitamin, three weeks on, one month off, three weeks on, one month off, or in a week, take a multivitamin twice a week only and get your fruits and vegetables to get you the rest. If you have a nutritional deficiency, don't take a multivitamin. So I have a vitamin B6 and a vitamin E deficiency gene. So when I do my blood test, I look if my vitamin E and B6 are low. If they're low, I take a standalone B6 and I take a standalone vitamin D for the next one or two months. I take a multivitamin once or twice a week to top up everything else. But otherwise I require, I, I rely on fruits and vegetables. So I would say this as a parting comment. Multivitamins and supplements are a nutritional convenience for your nutritional indiscipline. I've started a site called supplement.in, S-U-P-P-L-I-M-E-N-T dot in, so that I can advise people that if they decide to take supplements, they need guided advice on it. Don't buy it on Amazon. By the way, in Amazon, there's a lot of counterfeited products. Get it from me. I have seen international brands, same packaging, different capsules, capsule sent for analysis. One has the original product of probiotics. The other has milk powder in it. Why? Because there was a cunning guy out there who said, oh, wow, Ryan Fernando has made this collagen. I'm going to duplicate his label. I'm going to put milk powder in it. It's going to cost me 30 rupees to put that milk powder. And then I'm going to sell it to you for 1,000 rupees. Mr. Fernando is selling it on Amazon for 2,000 rupees. You're going to look at Amazon. Hey, same to same, same to same. I'm going to buy the cheaper product. Guess what? On anything that you buy on an e-commerce site, don't buy supplements unless you know the manufacturer directly or buy from the manufacturer's site directly. Even if they take five days to deliver it to you, you're safer there with the multivitamin from there because a lot of counterfeiting is happening on, on the e-commerce websites, which are aggregators. That's now, it from my end. Yes, please. Any last tip before we sign off for the day? I know there are tons of questions. I apologize if I was not able to get to all of them. But any last tip before we sign off for today? Um, I would say to people that watch my videos because I've given a lot of this knowledge, uh, they're available under my name, Ryan Fernando. So if you Google me up, that's one thing. Follow, follow me on Instagram because uh, the plan in 2021 is to give out a lot of tips in the form of charts and everything to people. Uh, for, for women, the one thing that I would say to you would be go organic. Go organic. I throw tomatoes out of my third floor terrace uh, when I fight with my wife. My neighbors think I'm very rich because tomatoes fall down into their garden. It's because it comes from the local store. And I'm like, why do you buy from the local store? I want organic in my house. So if there's one thing that you could do, buy organic. 20 years later, you'll meet me up in a mall or in a hotel lobby. And you'll say, thank you so much. Uh, you know, I haven't aged a year because uh, I switched to organic. God bless everyone. 
thank you, Ryan. Everybody's already asking for another session. But with that, we wish you and thank you once again for this awesome, awesome, awesome session today. God Good. bless you. Thank you for having me.